on Christmas before we leave it behind. So here is a song by Mendelssohn called Happiness at Christmas. Thank you so much, Barbara. That's um, just lovely. And good morning, everybody. I'm Kathy Libby. I'm your platform assistant today. And I would like to say Happy New Year. <laughs> um, I um, suspect it is true for me. I suspect for some of you, it's, um, it's just interesting. It's just a day on the calendar. And we turn it into a recognition of regeneration, of hope, um, and forward looking. And so, yeah, I don't get tired of saying Happy New Year, particularly this year. <laughs> so, um, and I want to thank in advance um, Reverend Carol Frampton um, for being with us today. It's just so lovely, um, given our experience in the past when you were living here, and uh, just so lovely to have you back and providing us with these wonderful talks. Um, and as yeah. usual, um, Barbara, there's just nothing better. Thank you so much. Um, and particularly enjoyed that opening from you. So thanks. Now for centering prayer. Sp Spirit, lead us on different roads from the paths that brought us here into this new year. Open us to new treasures from the chests that we have carried over so many miles. We have thought we were holy and blameless. We thought so all last year, and so we did what we thought was right. We still don't really know what freedom means for those that are truly oppressed. We thought we knew. We thought we were so wise. Spirit, lead us by another way, where light teaches us humility and grace. Lead us through all our blunders and missed opportunities to find new signs and wonders that overwhelm us with joy. Lead us ever into joy. The next piece I will play is called The Snow Prelude, number 15. Composer Ludovico Einaudi did a series of preludes contemplating snow. And I would like to keep us in a meditative state here. So I invite you to close your eyes and just follow the music.
Thank you. What a gift, Barbara. Thank you. So as you know from the title, I have chosen this date because um, today is the Sunday of the Epiphany. The Epiphany commemorates the manifestation of Christ to the Magi that finally arrived on that day having gotten a little lost along the way, wandering a while in the desert as one so often does. The word also refers to a sudden intuitive perception or insight into the reality or essential meaning of something. So I will do my best to facilitate one for us today, building on the beautiful talks that have come before me. And I just love how we play tag team each of us bringing our respective wind wisdoms. As the Magi come bearing gifts, I thought today would be a good opportunity to unpack a little bit this idea that giving and receiving are one energy flow. I believe that the sentence we repeat in unison every week captures the central th truth of the universe. They are prefer saying gifting and receiving, but I'll say more on that later. And that is perennial truth deserves a fuller exploration. Because we've been fed so many misconceptions about it, starting with the image of the scene itself. The Magi is kneeling in front of baby Jesus. I was going to say 2000 years ago, but actually, I think that story is probably older, adapted by Christianity to underline Jesus' status as king. We have grown up with that image, and it has shaped our psyche in a way that I believe Jesus would not have approved of. Jesus never wanted asymmetrical relationships. He engaged everyone in the same way as equals and demanded the same in return. One could say that kneeling in front of a child is void of grown up power dynamics. And one of my most moving experience in a church was the ritual of kneeling to wash people's feet on Monday, Thursday. Kneeling is a sign of humility. It's a beautiful gesture, the ultimate namaste. And yet still, I think that while the imagery is not problematic per se, on the contrary, it creates confusion for us because consciously or not, we mix it up with secular images of the powerless submitting to the powerful. We bring to it our transactional mind, the giving and taking rather than the gifting and receiving. The feeling that we have, that we must earn, deserve what we receive, and we then are obligated. There are easily all kinds of expectations both ways. And as much as I love accountants, that tab keeping attitude stops us from fully getting the message. Maybe it's the influence of an increasingly transactional commercialized culture. Or maybe it is because we're so uncomfortable with the idea of receiving and always have been. When we say giving and receiving in the same, is the same energy flow, we may assume that we struggle more with the first one. That statement is meant to give us a little nudge, a bit of extra motivation for us to give more freely. I think we struggle much more with receiving. Our prayers are essentially requests for what we want to receive, we're told. Ask and you shall receive. And so we do ask, but we don't fully open the door. We guard it so we can check that what comes in is truly what we ordered. We want to make sure that only the good stuff comes in, packaged the way we imagined, or the way Hollywood, or now I should rather say Netflix, says it should look like. In our desire to protect ourselves from the bad stuff, we may be shutting ourselves off from receiving all that the universe wants to gift us. If you look at nature, it doesn't have any opinion about what is good or bad. It just is. Trees don't complain about too much rain, not enough rain. All living creatures just adapt to what is what comes their way, which sometimes means even dying for a new cycle of life to take place. We humans are the only ones that insist on guarding the door rather than leaving it wide open. We want to control, qualify reality by putting labels on it. 
we declare something good or bad and then try to protect ourselves from what we have defined as bad. Our compulsive labeling ab habits means we preempt every experience. We let in only what resonates with us, what fits our already made up mind about who we are, what we want or don't want, what we believe we deserve or don't deserve. Labeling our experiences gives us the illusion of control. I think it may also prevent many gifts from ever reaching us, or when they do, stop us from adapting to make the most of them, like the people who win the lottery to quickly lose all the money to go back to their old familiar selves. What definitions and conditions have we put in place to our receiving? When I did my last talk, I was a little shy, so I didn't tell anyone ahead of time and then stretched myself, but not too much, to send the link to a few people that I thought may be interested. One friend was deeply moved by it and sent me in a moment of enthusiasm and spontaneous gratitude, a gift basket. Not just any gift basket, an enormous basket of gourmet delicious goodies. It weighed several kilos, shipped all the way from London. I wouldn't say it was completely out of character because she's a generous person, but it was out of the blue, totally unexpected, a true gift from the heart. And when I opened it, I was just floored. My own heart was also wide open and I received it and the spirit had been gifted as a, an act of pure appreciation, gratitude and love. It doesn't get more beautiful than that. I went to bed with a huge smile on my face, feeling light and loved. And then the next morning I woke up wobbly. I couldn't take her kneeling in front of me because once my mind had gotten involved, it started telling me that what I had given her with my words and my friendship couldn't possibly be worthy of such a gift. I wanted to immediately kneel in return, find a way of paying her back, express my love and gratitude immediately so that we could be even because we've mixed up being king with power, kneeling with status. We, we don't know how to receive an homage. We don't give each other permission to be treated like kings and queens. This may be the greatest crime that we commit towards one another, but first and foremost to ourselves, our inability to receive. And when we don't acknowledge what we receive, we lose it. Think about that. What we cannot see, what we cannot value, and we cannot savor. It is true for everything we receive. May it be someone's love and respect, beauty around us, a special moment, food on our plate, something we have achieved, we're good at. What we don't acknowledge as a gift, we lose. We know how to consume. That is not the same as receiving. I think one of the wonderful gift of this past Christmas for us is that it was a simpler celebration, less presence, but actually more true gifting and receiving around the tree. But there is a catch. If we open ourselves to receiving, we must be willing to receive all that is offered. If we fully open to the miracles and magic of every moment, we must be willing to receive also pain, anger, the ending of relationships, criticism, injustice, even death. All is well, all is welcome, without trying to understand, without judgment. This is not an easy practice, especially now at a time of many challenges and emotions. We are not trees. Our mind gets in the way. For us humans, it requires a vulnerability that does not come naturally to us. It also requires going against our own culture that is quick to label. When my father died, and he died at the time of his choice, something that is legal in Switzerland in cases of terminal illness, 
I experienced his death as a liberation, as a courageous choice he was making and came out of that very powerful moment, inspired, strengthened, feeling more connected to him than I had ever been. It was a huge gift. What I was not prepared for was everyone else defining the event of his death with their own label. My standard answer to their will meaning responses was, thank you. It was very peaceful. I am so grateful for what he was and will continue to be for me. But many couldn't accept it. Some declaring I was in denial, imposing their interpretation and emotions. They couldn't receive my experience and my sense of freedom and connection turned into heaviness. Let us stop resisting. Let us not try to define what we and others receive. Let us just be with it. When it comes to death, there is a word in it for it in South Africa, opposite. That means coming to sit next to someone, no word needed just offering a presence when grieving. We would do well to learn how to opposite with people we love and with strangers, and most importantly with ourselves, to be fully present, keep ourselves open to the experience, resisting the temptation to label, to conclude, to fix anything. Just offer our presence, accompany the receiving and the adaptation transformation that it requires. Having said that, I believe humans have an additional step. We cannot fully control what comes our way. Our attempts at filtering and protecting ourselves from poten potentially unpleasant experiences often backfire. But we do have free choice, the freedom to not keep what is being gifted after we have received and examined it. Maybe we block so much of our receiving because once the gift reaches us, we don't know how to say thank you, but no thank you. Again, our culture doesn't help. We are not encouraged to receive and release, to, sim to say or simply think to ourselves, I do not judge you for what you want to give me, but I am not interested in your gift and I have no obligation to accept it or provide anything in return. We are taught to keep the peace, accommodate, not hurt other people's feelings when we should teach children to discern. And discernment is very different from judging and labeling and teach them to walk away from bad deals. We do not allow ourselves that freedom. Somehow, as I was thinking about this talk about giving and receiving, I started playing around with the concept of currencies. I started noticing that different people trade in different currencies, often in unconscious ways. In some friendships, the currency is unconditional love, support, and honesty. These are spacious, nurturing ones. In the majority of relationships, however, there's an unspoken deal, a transaction. Sometimes the deal is to feel sorry for one another and affirm each other's stories. I've often found myself exaggerating problems so I could join my friends in their complaining, to not make them feel alone in their struggle. I imagine many of you have mothers like mine that believe that worrying is a proof of love. She's, she gives what she has and knows she also imposes that currency without realizing how it feels to be on the receiving end and that there may be better ways to contribute to others. And yet she demands gratitude for her worrying in return. Others may be trading in abusive hidden currencies such as shaming and undermining that they wrap up in love and concern. The combinations are endless and at times quite a twisted mix. It's useful to ask ourselves what currency is this person really offering and requesting in return? So learning to receive it all with an open heart, yes, to then also give ourselves the permission to say no, not necessarily out loud, by the way, that is often not needed nor kind, but to quietly sort what is and is not a contribution, not based on a judgment, but by examining the energy of the gift. Does it light you up? Does it bring you greater joy and freedom? Does it expand your universe? 
If it is contracted energy, if it is given in a currency you're not interested in trading in, fear, guilt, flattery, neediness, we can say thank you and release. Maybe we block receiving so much because we believe that once we do, we have to keep it all as it is, the creation of mixed emotions, unresolved trauma and misguided intentions. We don't, we can receive it all and the next breath keeping only what fits us because we treat it as a true gift, not as an IOU. We receive it as a king or queen, being who you are is all that is required. A king or queen is never questioned for what they do with what they are offered. Gifts to royalty bear no obligation. And when you choose to kneel and present a gift, you should likewise not keep the tab. You can offer it in complete freedom with no expectation of what the person will do with it, trusting that they will receive what they can, when they can, being willing to receive even judgment and rejection in return. Understood in this way, the scene of the Magi's becomes a beautiful one. Like many other messages in the Bible, we just have to be ready to receive it. My wish for 2021 is that we, we do, we give ourselves permission to be treated as the kings and queens that we are, trusting our knowing of what to do with the gifts, putting aside what doesn't contribute to us so we can truly and fully receive what enriches and expands our lives. And that we just as easily kneel in front of others as fellow royals, seeing their beauty, acknowledging their contribution. And so for the meditation, let us practice kneeling. I would love to have done it physically altogether, but we can do it remotely in our minds Remembering that Rumi said, there are 10,000 ways of kneeling. So I will ask you to sit back and close your eyes and take a deep, deep breath. And another one. And one more. Picture yourself walking in the desert. It may be sand dunes or just a wide open space. You are alone, walking silently. Yet as you walk, some people appear like a mirage. The first ones to cross your path are those that took care of you as a child. Your biological parents, those that took on that role by choice, your siblings, if you had any, an extended family, your teachers, your friends. They just cross your path and you Acknowledge them with a nod and continue your journey. As you keep walking, you enter into new phases of your life. Those that influenced in good or not so good ways your life as a teenager and as a young adult pass your way. Let them show up. Don't try to control who comes and who doesn't. Some may appear you didn't expect. You may have crossed their path only once and here they are. Just nod and keep on walking. You're now in your adult life. New people appear. Those that you've chosen to build your life with. Those that life put on your path. Take in each one that shows up. Don't allow your mind to qualify each person that passes by. Just be with each encounter.
Now you find yourself alone again, still walking. And you see an, an oasis with three palm trees. And as you approach, you see that there's a, a kind of throne under each tree, beautifully carved chairs. And there's someone sitting in each one. One of the person that you crossed along the way or someone new that hasn't featured so far. These are three people, however, that have contributed to your life. Now the gift to you may not have been an easy one to receive. The gift may have been their absence or even an act of violence. It may not have been intended as a contribution. You are the one that made it so. You took whatever they gave you, a sentence, a gesture, or years of a relationship, and turned it into a beautiful gift. Kneel in front of the first one and acknowledge his or her gift. By acknowledging it, you receive it again. You integrate it in your being. Thank you. Do the same for the second person. Thank you. And now the third. Thank you for your contribution. And now you find yourself alone again and you're sitting on a throne yourself. Take a deep breath. And then you notice three figures in the distance. These are your Magi's. They come to honor you for what you have contributed to their lives. There may be important figures in your life. Some may be those that you've just honored. Or there may be people that you hardly know yet whose lives you have greatly impacted, whether you meant to or not. Don't try to control, let yourself be surprised by who shows up. They're now here and they kneel in front of you, acknowledging what they have received from you. Open your heart to their gratitude. Don't qualify, judge. Don't say it was nothing. Here, each one of them say thank you. Receive their appreciation. In 2021, may you be every day the king or queen that you are. And may you kneel in front of others as peers. Amen. Carol, I am so moved by your message. And it reminds me of how each of you in this community has been a magi to me. And um, I wasn't thinking along these lines when I chose this piece, but I knew it would fit in some way. This is Joy by George Winston.
Thank you so much, Barbara. Thank you so much. Um, helping us to close with joy is just, <laughs> I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. And um, Carol, like Barbara, I'm, I'm just very deeply moved. I will, um, I will listen to that talk again multiple, multiple times. I will bring it to people's attention who are not on today. I just um, thank you. The focus on giving and receiving, keeping only what fits us, discernment, and the journey you took us on in the meditation was just a journey I wanted to retake multiple times. So bless you. Thank you. And um, before we do the prayer for protection, I'll do a <clears throat> closing prayer. Spirit, you are the love we have yet to find, the peace beyond imagining. You are the breath of life, enlivening the hardest heart. You are the vibrant color illuminating the darkest dawn. You are the truth that calls in quiet whisper and through storm. For those days when we forget, be with us, spirit. When life distracts and focus shifts, spirit be with us. When self imposes its own will, be with us. Embrace us once again, we pray in sweet and loving fellowship with you, spirit. Amen. <clears throat>